the VA's guidance uh, on insomnia disorder is wrong. <clears throat> it is, and it needs to be corrected, especially when it can harm veterans, right? My name's Todd Finnerty. I'm a psychologist, and this is like the time in the video where a YouTuber would say like, share, subscribe, but I don't guarantee I'll ever record another video, so <laughs> subscribe in case I do. <laughs> but uh, I did want to make sure, since a lot of people have been asking about this, to, to, to talk about it. And, the, and I wrote a blog post on my website, nexusletters.com, um, really kind of fleshing this out more, but um, since a lot of us don't necessarily check blogs and things right away thought I'd mention it um, again the insomnia disorder guidance in my opinion from the VA is wrong right and so you know just to review uh, <clears throat> the VA's guidance uh, basically says it, it focuses on when DSM-5 which is the diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders the the um, mental health diagnosis uh, manual, essentially. Um, it revised the diagnostic terminology from primary insomnia to insomnia disorder. And these types of things were correct. I mean, um, <clears throat> but the way that the VA has interpreted this change is wrong and, mis and it mischaracterizes it, right? Uh, they say that the diagnostic criteria includes ruling out all the potential causes the diagnostic criteria for insomnia disorder. That is actually wrong. <laughs> uh, and the VA's guidance goes on to say, accordingly, a valid diagnosis of insomnia disorder meeting DSM-5 criteria means that the insomnia condition is not caused by or secondary to any other condition. That is also wrong. <laughs> uh, I don't want to say this is a lie. It's just false. It's a mistake. And mistakes need to be corrected, right? Especially when they hurt veterans. So the VA's guidance mischaracterizes insomnia disorder and what the DSM-5 actually says, right? So what the DSM-5 actually says under insomnia disorder uh, is that uh, coexisting mental disorders and medical conditions do not adequately explain the predominant complaint of insomnia, right? Uh, it's not a subtle difference. <laughs> so... Um, so, <clears throat> basically that the mental disorder or medical condition alone should not adequately explain the insomnia, right? So, the, the VA's guidance basically says that secondary conditions to insomnia can exist, right? Uh, insomnia disorder. It's actually wrong. <laughs> uh, so, and they go on almost even worse to then conclude that the insomnia is already accounted for essentially in the rating for that other condition or that's already going to be addressed so you know just for example let's take tinnitus or tinnitus for for, for normal people but you know tinnitus, check on my watch here I don't, tinnitus still exists at the moment and early 2024, right, um, in terms of a rating, right, it's rateable at 10%. Uh, tinnitus or tinnitus <laughs> itself, it's not adequate to explain chronic insomnia, right? Tinnitus can cause insomnia, uh, but lots of people with tinnitus don't go on to have chronic insomnia, right? Uh, it's the cognitions, the behaviors, that we have that can be triggered by tinnitus that go on to give to lead to chronic insomnia potentially right but the tinnitus itself is not enough you also have to have these cognitions these behaviors the tinnitus does not adequately explain the insomnia again my take uh, so but you know you talk about cognition and behaviors here have to talk to a psychologist right and i've been a psychologist for over 20 years i've worked on social security disability and va disability cases for a good chunk of that time uh social security disability for basically almost the whole time but <clears throat> one thing you could take is somebody uh doing research on this and there was a study just published not even a year ago 2023 uh, 
and I'll take a quote from, you know, a, a significant, this is a quote, uh, a significant, and I've, I've got this linked on my blog, on my blog, my blog, <laughs> the nexusletters.com. Um, I'll give you a link, but um, a significant proportion of individuals with distressing tinnitus also report insomnia, right? So the authors of the study, they note, emerging evidence suggests that tinnitus-related insomnia cannot be explained only by the presence of tinnitus and that sleep-related cognitive behavior processes may play a key role in exacerbating tinnitus-related insomnia. And of course, I mean, it almost sounds like, like an obvious, of course, thing if you know enough about insomnia, but that's how we view chronic insomnia, right? <clears throat> but let's just use the VA's ratings against them. For this, for this example, right? I picked tinnitus because it was easy. Um, tinnitus gets you 10%, right? Kind of know that. Chronic sleep impairment, if that was lumped in with tinnitus, chronic sleep impairment on the mental disorders rating schedule, I guess I got to check my watch again for this one. <laughs> mental disorders rating schedule, currently chronic sleep impairment is at the 30% level, right? Early 2024. Um, so... How is it possible that something that falls at the 30% level is lumped in, is already accounted for in something that's only 10%? I know VA math is fuzzy, but no, come on. So the VA's guidance is actually confusing. It's getting confused about pyramiding of symptoms or double counting of symptoms in impairment. Uh, they, they're making a mistake, basically. And we know insomnia isn't just uh, isn't just one thing, but typically it comes from predisposing factors, precipitating factors, and perpetuating factors, right? Like the three P's of insomnia. So predisposing factors would be, you know, things that make you more susceptible, you know, an easy thing is maybe your genes, that kind of thing. Precipitating factors are things that might trigger those or, or, or trigger the insomnia in general, like tinnitus in this example, right? A precipitating factor, it might come before. And then what really causes chronic insomnia, insomnia that just, not just one night's bad sleep, but actually an, an insomnia disorder, what we would consider an insomnia disorder, are the perpetuating factors. And that's where you talk to the second, the behaviors and the cognitions that come down the road from, from things like tinnitus, right? They're the perpetuating factors that, that actually lead to an insomnia disorder, like, like a, something that we would call a disorder, not just, I didn't sleep well last night, right? <clears throat> so they're not going forever, because <laughs> my, my throat, my voice won't take it, I guess, right now. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, the VA's guidance is, is sort of confusing these precipitating factors, these triggers, like tinnitus, tinnitus, for example, with perpetuating factors, like the actual chronic insomnia. And it's, it's telling that, you know, how could chronic sleep impairment be considered in tinnitus already if the tinnitus is only 10%, whereas chronic sleep impairment is 30% on a mental disorder training schedule, right? So it's not okay <laughs> to say insomnia disorder or secondary physical conditions shouldn't be considered. Um, but in the meantime, in the meantime, uh, it might make sense to make sure you have some other mental health disorder uh, diagnosis in addition to the insomnia to, so that that chronic sleep impairment can be considered. And, you know, at some point that, that guidance for insomnia disorders uh, needs to change. If you want to read much more about what I wrote, in relation to this, you can go to my website, nexusletters.com, and click on the insomnia and VA disability little link tab there, and you'll get this opinions and more, right? Uh, and some links to, to, to studies and, and things. Uh, thanks again. Uh, like I say, like, share, subscribe. I make no guarantees I'll ever record another video, though. So uh, thanks again. Bye-bye.